Our role is that of advisors to the telecoms industry, so our clients include uh, operators, regulators and institutions, so all the major telecoms operators, uh, but also, for example, the European Commission uh, and uh, the GSMA, who put together this great show here. And the services we provide uh, range from advising operators on buying uh, spectrum, so valuing spectrum, participating in spectrum auction, but also cost savings, uh, for example, taking costs out of the network, uh, regulatory issues such as accounting separation, regulatory cost accounting, uh, and many other aspects that uh, touch on the telecoms industry today. Well, uh, that, that's a very good question. Does the mobile industry really need more spectrum? We hear this over and over again. The thing is, data traffic is increasing enormously. We all want uh, to use more data. Not only do we want more data, we want things to happen faster. We want to play video games. We want to be making video calls, uh, multi-party video calls. All of this consumes enormous, enormous amount of capacity. And in the big cities, the traffic densities are so high because as you walk, for example, around London, you see everybody sort of looking at their smartphone and doing stuff, uh, and all other cities are alike, be it Sao Paulo, Paris, uh, Manila. Uh, so you have these enormous traffic concentrations. And just to cope with that capacity, uh, operators don't know where to put the base stations anymore. They're simply running out of physical space. So the only way out is to get more spectrum. There's no way around it if we want these services. Um, and it's not just capacity related spectrum. So here we're talking about spectrum above one gigahertz, but also spectrum below one gigahertz. Uh, because where do we use our smartphones? Well, we use them in buildings, uh, indoors. And uh, if you want to be able to use your smartphone indoors, well, you do need uh, the 700 megahertz band, the 800 megahertz band, uh, or 600, which is now being auctioned in some places. That gives you that uh, good user experience uh, indoors and also avoids not spots. Uh, and in other markets, uh, what's more important there is the rural coverage you get out of the spectrum. And that's, that's a key issue. How do we bring uh, connectivity to people living in rural area? How do we give them the good broadband experience and again there we need uh, a fair amount of spectrum in below one gigahertz. Yes, very often, funnily enough, the sort of press uh, says successful spectrum auction is an auction which raises a lot of money. Uh, but if you really think about it, it's a tax on the consumer, it's a stealth tax because it comes out of the operators pockets uh, which means they can invest less which means uh, the services are not as good and there's a great variety between regulators in different countries for example the Swedish regulator their position is we want to make as much spectrum uh, available as cheaply as possible uh, that is their stance and the result is people in Sweden have great services at reasonable cost however if you're trying to uh, milk the mobile industry and charge huge amount of spectrum, well, there is nothing left over for deployment. Uh, and this particularly affects uh, operators in emerging markets uh, in African countries, Southeast Asia, um, where connecting the unconnected is a major issue. And if you effectively increase the cost to operators of doing that, this will never happen. And the society, societal gains by uh, having reasonable or modest spectrum fees but encouraging investment, the societal gains far outweigh, even in monetary value, uh, any uh, license revenue you might get immediately. So in answer to your question, then uh, spectrum license fees have to come down because mobile operators need ever more spectrum, revenues are not going up, so if uh, spectrum prices keep going up or even keep as they are, uh, this is not sustainable, so not only are they too high now, they, they definitely have to come down.
by a factor of five, I would venture. Cost reduction is essential for the further development of this uh, industry and uh, network infrastructure sharing is one key component in there. Uh, Colliago just has finished a project with the ITU involving 15 Southern African countries and in this project we have developed uh, network infrastructure sharing guidelines. These are shared now among the regulators in Southern Africa uh, and we already got a lot of interest globally from other regulatory agencies. Uh, we are also working with the GSMA, the Connected Society program, which is all about connecting the unconnected. And here we are talking about rural access. And here it's from the very beginning essential to have the most cost efficient solution. And of course, this can only be done with uh, network infrastructure sharing. Here we developed a toolkit and that is currently tested in Tanzania and in Indonesia. And uh, it's going to be rolled out in another three projects, pilot projects uh, during this year. Thank you.